there are, um, as with many questions, there are easy ways and hard ways to have a go at this. So part of what makes it a bit icky is that you've got these fractions on fractions, which are kind of gross. Um, and as I write it up on the board here, I'm going to take the opportunity to encourage you all, when you have fractions on fractions, because sometimes you can't avoid it, um, to put some extra brackets just to help you out. You don't have to do those. I think it's clear from that writing, but it's helpful. Yeah. Say it again. So are you suggesting we could convert this to index form? OK, so we know that we can write our fractions like this as x to the power of minus 1, right? So that could be something that I do, and that would avoid the fractions, right? x to the minus 1 on 1 plus x to the minus 1. And I'd be totally OK with that, right? So at least I don't have fractions on fractions. But I can still continue with this in whichever of these forms that I've got, and I can still write it in a simpler way. Can someone suggest to me what's something I could do? Yeah? Also, 1 over x divided by 1 plus 1 over x. 1 over x divided by this? Is that what you're saying? Yep. Yeah. OK, let's follow this rabbit trail, shall we? So I'm dividing by something with some fractions in it, right? So you guys know when you divide by a fraction, you can change that. If you were dividing by a fifth, you could change that to be multiplying by, multiplying by the, it starts with an R. Do you know, what's the proper word for it? The reciprocal, very good. So I could do that. Um, and in fact, I will do that in a second. The catch is this thing is not one single fraction. This doesn't have a reciprocal because it's got bits in it. So how do I put it together? Like if we um, change it 1 to 1 over 1 and then um, times the lowest to the highest. Okay, yep. The okay, so you're suggesting we want to put these two together, right? In the same way that we had these two fractions? Is that what you're suggesting? No, I mean, or something else? Um, okay, so 1 and x, like the, um, the... The numerator one or the denominator one? Those two. 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. This guy? Yeah. Yep. So we times those by 1 at the top. And the middle ones together, like 1 plus 1 is x. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure I'm following. <laughs> are you, hold on, can I ask what you're trying to do? Are you trying to put these guys together, or are you trying to do something else? Something else. Okay, I'm going to come back to you, because I think I'm following with you now. But at the moment, I'm going to follow down, I'm gonna, I want to finish this line of reasoning that we've been suggested today, and then we'll come back to your idea, and we'll see why in a second. So if I want to divide by this fraction, I've got to get it as one fraction, and then I'll do this, right? I'll turn it upside down and turn it to multiplication. So how can I write this as one fraction rather than as two things? What would I do? Again. Say it again. again. I'm going to look for the lowest common multiple all over again, right? Now, this is 1 over 1. I want both denominators to be x. So instead of writing 1 over 1, I'm going to write it as x over x. Do you agree with that? Like that's, that's 1, isn't it? Do you agree with that? OK, and now I have a common denominator. The lowest common multiple of x and 1 happens to be x, x right? So now I've got this. Uh, let's see, x plus 1 on x. How's that? That's OK. Oh, cool, now I can do that thing we said before. I can divide. I can multiply by the reciprocal. So I'll write multiplication instead. And the reciprocal, of course, is x on 1 plus x. x plus 1. Sorry, I don't know why I changed that order. OK, what can I do now? Multiply. Yeah, I can multiply. Now, once I put these together, these are going to become one fraction, right? And you notice there's this uh, common factor on the top and the bottom. And so they can cancel out, can't they? Which is kind of nice. So you can just say that's 1 on 1 plus x, or x plus 1. I'll put it back to the order that I originally wrote it in. Can we simplify this any further? Or are you happy with that? Hmm. How did I get from here to here? I cancelled these um, x's were on the top and the bottom, right? Because I know once I've got them combined into one fraction, I'm going to search for common factors between the numerator and the denominator, and then I'll cancel them out, okay? And I might as well do that now. I can cancel them out as soon as I see them um, lined up with each other. Now, this is okay. Right? I, I'm happy with this answer. We don't usually like negatives in our denominators, but I don't know whether this is negative or not, because I've got no idea what x is. So I'm just going to leave that where it is. But there's something we can do, and this is coming back to the suggestion we were having before. There's something we can do right from the first line 
that would make this a lot easier. And it's what I want to highlight in this particular question. There's lots of ways to go about these different, lots of different paths to these questions, but some are easier and less error prone than others. See how you've got fractions on the top and the bottom, right? And I said, oh, that's gross. I don't like having fractions on fractions. So we went down this path to get rid of the fractions on fractions. But there's another thing you can do. I'm going to write down just like before. Do you notice that the fractions on the top and the bottom, they both have the same denominator? Do you notice that? Yeah. So what I can do, in fact, is I can multiply through by the same thing on the top and the bottom. That doesn't change things, right? We've already established if you multiply by 3 on 3, same fraction, right? Multiply by 2 on 2, same fraction. What might be a something on something that I could multiply by that would get rid of both of those fractions in one fell swoop? Any suggestions? I'll give you a tip. It's not 2 on 2 and it's not 3 on 3. Jermaine? Um, is it the reciprocal of 1 over x? Yeah. If I multiply by the reciprocal of 1 over x, which is just x, x multiplying by a reciprocal is a great idea because it just completely cancels out whatever is on the denominator. Watch what happens. What's 1 on x times its reciprocal? What is any number times its reciprocal? It's just 1. What happens on the bottom here? Well, don't forget the x multiplies by both of these terms. So 1 times x gives you x. And then 1 on x times x gives you... Was that more work or less work than before? That was dramatically less, right? Now, we arrived at the same point. We arrived at the same answer, which is always reassuring. You're like, OK, whichever way I went, I'm going get, to get there. But this is clearly more time consuming. More worrisome for me than the fact that it's kind of time consuming is that it's very error prone. The more things you are doing, the more places that you open up for yourself to make a silly little mistake. You know how this is in exams, OK?